there is a significant step up. The responsibility is much larger. You really do have to be accountable and be in the detail of the matters that you're working on. There's a lot more that's expected of you. And that can be quite hard when you're trying to already learn and take that step up. Pace is much faster. The learning curve is really steep. Hello everyone and welcome to the Student Lawyer Podcast Series. Whether you're at school, sixth form, university, thinking about a career in law or exploring law careers, you're in the right place. We are the one-stop shop for student lawyers. If you'd like to join the Student Lawyer as a writer, please email hello at thestudentlawyer.com. This episode is sponsored by the University of Law. The University of Law offers a range of undergraduate and postgraduate courses and master's degrees alongside an award-winning pro bono clinic so you can build up your legal experience while studying. And their experienced career service will enable you to put your best foot forward when launching your legal career. The courses are employment focused and based on real legal practice so you'll be better prepared for the workplace. Part-time and online study options Options are available so you can work and study at the same time. Click the link in the description box of the podcast to find out more about the courses on offer. Welcome to the Student Lawyer Podcast Series. My name's Camilla and I'm a trainee solicitor in my second seat and I am your host for today. In today's episode, we're joined by Megan Hume solicitor at Mishkondorea. Megan has been named as one of the 20 law fluencers to watch out for in 2023 by Legal Cheek because of her online work. Megan is a social mobility advocate and is also founder of It's All Hearsay, a popular Instagram page and website offering help and guidance to aspiring lawyers, which was named in Legal Cheek's lineup of the 10 best legal social media users of 2022. In today's episode, we're going to be discussing Megan's journey to qualification and the transition from trainee to NQ, as well as finding out more about It's All Hearsay. So without further ado, let's welcome Megan onto the show. Thank you for joining us today, Megan. Hello, thank you very much for inviting me back. No worries at all. Um, Let's kick off straight into the the questions. Um, Please, could you provide an overview of your career history to date for us, please? Yes. So I went to the University of Lincoln, which is a non muscle group university to study law. Neither of my parents went to university and I didn't really have any contacts in the legal industry. So it was quite a big step for me. I never knew that I wanted to be a lawyer either. So I picked law just because I did well in my English language, psychology and business studies A-levels. Funnily enough, I did really get into law, so I went straight on to do my LPC at the University of Law. And at this stage, I was working part time as a paralegal in a really small firm in order to fund the costs of moving to London and doing the LPC course. And then after completion of the LPC, I landed a paralegal role at Mishcon, where I stayed until I got my training contract with Trowers and Hamlins in 2020. I was applying for training contracts since my second year of university, so it did take me a really good time, I think about four years of training contract applications. Then following completion of my training contract, I qualified as a lawyer at Michigan Contraveria, as you said, in the insolvency and restructuring litigation team. That's great. Um, thank you for covering that. And I think it's um, really interesting how your career has kind of come full circle from um, being at Mishcon and then qualifying there. So that's that's really interesting. Um, and congratulations on qualifying last September. Um, how did you decide what thank practice you. area to qualify into and what drew you to um, restructuring and insolvency litigation? So I always knew that I enjoyed contentious work. So when I was a paralegal, I was able to explore lots of different departments. I was in tax litigation, commercial litigation, and I did some fraud as I was kind of picking up work when I was needed. And so the variety of work that I got each day was really great. It's a continual learning process being in litigation because obviously you've got to stay on top of lots of developing case law. Um, And I really enjoyed the ability to problem solve and investigate. So on my training contract, already having that foundation, 
I wanted to try something new because I'd already had so much experience in litigation. So I tried areas such as corporate and employment. While I did find parts of both of these areas appealing, corporate and employment just didn't quite tick all of those boxes. So on qualification, I really did sort out a litigation role. Um, Unfortunately, there wasn't any uh, litigation roles on my training contract at my training firm. So I went out on a bit of a whim. Uh, I did apply for corporate internally to kind of ensure that I had a role regardless of whether there was something externally. And I was successful in obtaining this role. But I just knew in my heart that it it wasn't quite what I wanted to do. So it did give me a lot of confidence going out into the external market. Um, but I never really knew what type of litigation I wanted to do. I was just going to target commercial litigation um, at first because obviously it straddles lots of different niches and it's quite generalized. But then I saw the insolvency and restructuring litigation role at Mishcon and I just felt like giving it a shot. I understood broadly what it would entail, working through some of the matters that I did as a paralegal, but was intrigued by the combination really of being able to apply my corporate knowledge and the technical law that comes with the Insolvency Act. So really, it was quite a tricky decision because I didn't know if it was for me. I just knew that I had some experience, some knowledge, and really it came down to just really gelling with my interviewers on at my interview I'd heard really good things about the team so yeah I just ended up going with my gut and I've actually really landed on my feet I'm really enjoying the practice area insolvency as a whole is incredibly broad I've not had one day the same since I started and you can just get some really crazy matters so it's definitely keeping me entertained that sounds wonderful. Um, I really like how you uh, followed your gut and just went with your instincts and, and went towards what you know that you enjoyed from your past experiences. Um, I think that's 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 amazing. Yeah, I think it's definitely something I would recommend for somebody trying to find out what they want to qualify in. You just need to pick out your strengths and yeah, find things that keep you interesting because really the work is the most important part. And if you don't enjoy the work to its full extent, then you're probably going to find a couple of years down later down the line that it's not quite for you, and you know you you want to try something else. Definitely, um, and. Some people may or may not know um, that you actually have to apply an interview for uh, newly qualified roles at the end of the training contract. So the application and the interviews, um, they don't stop at the training contract, unfortunately. Um, Please, could you provide us with some insight into what the application process is like for newly qualified or NQ roles? Is it similar to paralegal or Um, training contract interviews or different um yeah I'd love to hear more about that it is a whole new can of worms I can tell you that I mean it depends whether you stay at your training firm or whether you go externally really it all comes down to your the end of your third seat you should start thinking about your qualification obviously and you need to ask yourself do you want to stay at your training firm where would you like to qualify And obviously, if you want to stay at your training firm, there's a specific internal process and it is different for each firm. But generally, most firms release a job list for their internal applicants. And that's around April and May if you're the September, October qualification round. Um, And it will list all of the NQ roles that are available internally. And obviously, you get first pick. If you're qualifying in March, then it's slightly different, but it's usually the jobs list will come out one or two months before your final seat or in your final seat, sorry, so that you, at that point, will know what your options are. Uh, Each one, as I said, is different, but the applications usually form a cover letter and a CV, or it may just be a CV. You will likely have one or two interviews and with a variety of people at the firm, usually people from your team or your potential team. And sometimes there's a written assessment. I was really lucky, though, and only just had an internal process Uh, that consisted of one interview and that was off the back of a cover letter I didn't even need to submit a CV however externally gosh it is just like doing the training contract applications all over again you have to think obviously about what firms you want to target how well you'll know the team if you think you'll fit in but it's so much more competitive and intense I guess it's because you're proving 
that you're not only just a good candidate, but you're also qualified enough to join the team and that you're going to compete against the other people going for that role. I had one external process where it was five stages. So (laughs) pretty similar for it to doing like the training contract application through to a vacation scheme. I think the interviews tend to be way more technical and competency-based, but you will have a variety of questions. I found my NQ interviews to be more like a quiz, whereby you'll have some general knowledge questions thrown in and then lots of curveballs to see if you know and have done your research about the firm. I think NQ um, NQCVs also look really different than like a standard paralegal slash trainee CV2. So I would definitely consider looking at that early on um, to make sure it's all ready before you start interviewing. But yeah, generally very different from paralegal training contract route, but is slightly similar to doing the training contract application process. Thank you for that insight. Um, It's, yeah, no one really talks about that pro- that actual process because, you know, I suppose the, the biggest challenge is getting the training contract in the first place. So, um, yeah, it's really interesting to hear your experience for that. And uh, it's great to know that the uh, fun never ends when it comes to applications. Absolutely, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'd like to take a moment to speak about the University of Law, which is the university I decided to study my LPC at. The University of Law is the sponsor of this podcast and makes it possible for us to continue bringing these episodes to you. So we really appreciate you supporting us by supporting our sponsors. What really sets the University of Law apart from other universities is its belief in training students for the real world from the moment they accept a place. The University of Law's experienced career service and award-winning pro bono clinics offer students the chance to get real-life legal experience which can boost employability. They offer a range of undergraduate and postgraduate legal training and master's degrees designed by qualified experts to help students excel at any stage of their career. Their courses are employment focused, honing key skills in a teaching environment based on real legal practice. Part-time and online study options are also available on many of their courses to help students work and study at the same time. If you'd like to find out more about the courses on offer, please click the link in the description box of the podcast. Um, So do you have any just general top tips for landing an NQ role at your dream firm? Yeah, I think it goes back to your standard training contract application um, knowledge and tips and tricks as uh, as you've learned along the way so networking is obviously so key if you are gonna um, go externally then you really need to know that you're going to get on well with the team you need to try your very best to meet the people in the potential new team and see if you can see yourself working there different firms obviously have very different cultures and the ways of working may impact your enjoyment of your qualification area so just because you've taken a seat in an area it might not always mean you understand what work you'll be doing because different firms have different clients and different matters. So just having six months is a very small snapshot of what you might be doing. So you really do need to be clear on what the work on what work the firm does. So it goes back to just doing your research, being really thorough, preparing as much as you can, uh, liaise with recruiters. They are very good at obviously telling you what to expect. They have very good working relationships with lots of good firms. So they will support you, essentially. They might do mock interviews. They might give you some resources and tell you what to expect. And they'll help you to cover the market really well. Um, I went with two to three recruiters and I was very clear on my boundaries. I must stress this, that a lot of recruiters don't always have your best interests at heart. There obviously are some fantastic ones out there, but you do really have to make sure that you're firm with them about what you want and what you're trying to target because they might try and sway you into certain areas or into firms that they have a better relationship with. And sometimes they get a little bit um, big for their boots in a way where they start sending your CV out to places that you've not agreed to. So just make sure you're really strict about where they can send your CV and document carefully who's sending your CV to where so there's no crossover. But you can um, send out speculative applications too. 
Um, if there's not a job available and you really want to work at a certain firm, then you can ask them to kind of inquire and see if they would be open to opening a role for you. Um, but yeah, it just comes down to research and networking again. I think it's a lot easier at this stage in that sense because you have a bit more backing behind you that you've done your training contracts and you know you'll have lots of experience to talk about so just making sure that you bring that out in the interviews and when you're networking will also be key fantastic advice Megan thank you so much for sharing that and um, what was the transition like between trainee and NQ how do expectations and support levels change um, and what tips do you have for navigating the change successfully? Well, obviously, I'm still very new. So um, take the things I say with a pinch of salt. But I found navigating being an NQ much harder than navigating a training contract. I don't know if it's because of the fact I had so much paralegal experience before that I found it very easy to hit the ground running when I was a trainee. But I have noticed there is a significant step up. The responsibility is much larger. You really do have to be accountable and be in the detail of the matters that you're working on. So you're, there's a lot more that's expected of you. And that can be quite hard when you're trying to already learn and take that step up. Um, so the pace is much faster. The learning curve is really steep. Overall, of course, I'm really enjoying it. I think the extra responsibility is great. It's really pushing me and I'm thriving in an environment, you know, much more so than when I was being kind of limited by the constraints of being a trainee you know there's only so much you can do whereas now you can do as much as you want essentially you can say to that partner I would really like to have a go at this can I have a first draft or which you obviously can as a trainee but you're under very heavy supervision and you have a little bit more autonomy on what you can pick up when you work on certain things and yeah generally it's just very different so um I'd say that the support is still the same. Everyone knows that you're qualified and they still take the time to explain everything to you. But in terms of tips for doing well, I would say just to have regular check-ins, obtain feedback as much as you can on specific tasks, really absorb as much as you can when it comes to people's different learning style, um, different working styles. And yeah, be confident really is ultimately what I'm struggling with but I know I have to do because that imposter syndrome really just kicks in and I don't know if it's different for me because I've moved laterally and I'm in a an area of law that I didn't actually have a seat in but I found that I need to just take extra time to learn and factor in extra time to do the thinking because you're working on the bigger picture now rather than just the specific task in front of you um and yeah just taking the time to think about what comes next because it is likely that that person that you're working with will be like great thank you very much for this now off you go and do the next bit and you kind of have to try and work out what that is obviously if you don't know you can ask questions but you do have to move your matters forward a lot more than when you're a trainee so yeah I'm still learning (laughs) it sounds like you're doing amazingly it does sound like a big step up um but yeah it's Sounds like you're you're doing really well. So um, yeah, I'll definitely be picking your brain when it comes <laughs> to qualification time for myself. <laughs> um, and I'm sure that many of our listeners will be familiar with the fantastic work that you do for aspiring lawyers through your platform. It's all hearsay. But for those who don't know, please could you tell us a bit more about It's All Hearsay? Yes, of course, my baby. Um, it's All Hearsay was founded in 2021 and I created it while I was on my training contracts because I found obtaining a training contract really hard. I said at the beginning, it took me, I think, four years to find a training contract and coming from the background that I did describe at the beginning, I found that there was just a lack of knowledge and resources available for aspiring lawyers to really understand what the process is like and how to be successful so through applying 
for those training contracts over those four years uh, and also mentoring a variety of students once I got my training contract. I realized I just had a lot of knowledge on the industry to share. So I wanted to give back and create a space for a community which provides tips and tricks and free resources and advice on becoming a lawyer so that we can be more transparent about what the industry is and also the struggles and barriers that we all face in completing our journeys. So following the start of that, I've created my own mentoring scheme. I currently mentor 28 students and this cycle we've actually secured 10 vacation schemes with a lot of them getting through to the interview and assessment centers. So I'm so, so proud of them. And this year we've actually grown the It's All Hearsay team and we have a team of eight. They're fab in supporting me with organizing events and keeping on top of socials, writing blog posts. So yeah, very grateful for them too. And yeah, I just love doing it. I find it so rewarding. So can't wait to see what happens this year. That's amazing. Uh, 10, 10 vacation schemes this cycle. That's That's brilliant work. Yeah, I'm so, so impressed with how well they've all done. And um, uh, yeah, where can listeners connect with you? So Instagram is my main space. We provide lots of guides, fun reels and mini snapshots into lots of different things about how to complete your training contract um, applications to assessment centres, to just doing well generally as a paralegal or when you start your training contract. We also have a TikTok account, which is also at It's All Hearsay. Um, we do longer form articles on the blog, which is, I always get this wrong, it's all here say blog.wordpress.com. But if anyone has any questions or needs help with navigating being an NQ or even just finding an NQ role, then you can always reach out to me on LinkedIn under Megan Hume. Wonderful. And I will leave um, details in the uh, podcast notes so you can uh, get uh, just click on those, hopefully. And um yeah go and connect with Megan so thank you so much Megan for coming on the thank show thank you it's been a real pleasure to have you back um always just giving so much wisdom and knowledge um, we really appreciate it so thank you really appreciate it thank you for having me thank you and to all the listeners thank you for tuning in um and we'll see you in the next one goodbye To hear more of the Student Lawyers podcast, hit the subscribe button and leave us a star rating and review. If you would like to join the Student Lawyer as a writer, please email hello at thestudentlawyer.com.